Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, I want to lambast the Golden Banana Boys, the Custodies, because they think they're all that with their army-wide 2 plus save. Well, guess what, buddy boys? The guard can do your job, but better. You see, I've got an idea for a hyper durable guard army, a brick wall which enemies will break themselves upon. And so come with me on this journey of discovery. Let's fix our bayonets and charge right into today's episode. Attention, guardsmen. My ever salty partner in crime, Admiral Simon, has got an important announcement for you. This September and October, I am doing a charity walk along the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. We'll be raising money for two fantastic charities, our local hospice, Holton Haven, and also the Pink Ribbon Foundation that raises funds to combat breast cancer. As I hate camping, walking, and will be shitting in a bucket for four days, I will be particularly salty and would value any support you can give us. Please click the link below for our Just Giving page. Thank you very much. You heard the man, it's for a good cause, and you all know Simon from the Battle Reports. That's all for now, move out conscripts. First things first, I wanna lay down some context. I wanna tell you where this idea is coming from. The first seeds were planted within my brain when I went to a tournament recently and I ran my recon guard army. In this army, I had a lot of hellhounds and armored sentinels. And I found that it was not only quite fast, but it could really take a punch. And it was very effective at not only being a screen, but for just being a flat out brick wall. And this really stood out to me because normally when it comes to screening, my approach has always been to have something that's kind of sacrificial. You kind of expect it to die. So 20 guardsmen thrown forward, maybe scouting catachans, will be a good screen. They'll move block the enemy, but they're also almost guaranteed to die. And even if you move out with something like a chimera, which is relatively tough, it's still not that hard for someone to chew through a chimera if they really want to. And the end result would be that my screen would stop the enemy from getting to my viable units, but it wouldn't slow them down as much as I would like. Maybe they were able to consolidate into another unit behind. Maybe they're able to consolidate onto an objective, but they were getting a bit of extra movement and it felt like I was slowing them, not stopping them. But like I said, this wasn't really happening with these more durable units rather than pushing something onto the objective and then losing it and having to take it back and then losing it and having to take it back, what would happen is I would push onto objective and then he would push onto objective and we'd both end up on the objective and I hadn't lost any ground. And this was really valuable because it meant that I could actually continue to pour stuff onto the objectives and maintain control of them and not have to constantly try and fight back and deny my enemy primary because they're denying me primary, but I'm able to rack up the primary whilst the enemy is struggling to clear me off those objectives. And I noticed it again when I ran the Oops All Auto Cannon list because I had Hellhounds and I also had Sentinels in that army as well. And it wasn't quite to the same extent, but once again, I did notice that my Armour Sentinels were surprisingly durable and my Hellhounds with their two-up save always caught people off guard. But I have to say what really hammered at home was a recent battle report when Simon and I play tested the new Blood Angels versus Imperial Guard. And the Blood Angels Death Comfort units went flying into, again, these Hellhounds, these Chimeras, these Armour Sentinels all working together. And they just got really bogged down. And by robbing the Blood Angels of the momentum, it was like we took the wind out of their sails. And by taking away that momentum, it allowed the guard to seize the initiative, force the Blood Angels to be reactionary rather than proactive. And that ended up turning the game into a victory for the guard. And at first I thought it was going to be an easy win for the Blood Angels. So with all of these experiences coalescing and coming together and brewing in the easy bake oven of my mind, I thought, what would happen if we really lent into this? If we just went for a very, very durable, 
brick wall style army that top to bottom was focused on survivability first. Because at the end of the day, who doesn't like playing as the tank, either in video games or in role playing games, or in this case, in tabletop games? And after some thoughts and thunks, I have come up with a first pass. I have come up with my version 1.0 of a hyper durable guard army. And what I'm going to do is firstly take you through the list quickly and then circle back round and discuss how all of these units are going to come together and their role that I have for them in my game plan. Starting off, we have Gaunt's Ghosts, and we also have two other character units with two tank commanders. Both tank commanders, I've got Demolisher Cannons, Laz Cannons, and we have gone for the Plasma Cannons as well. Now, I have not given one of these tank commanders Grand Strategist, but there are a few points left over in the budget if that is something that you wanted to do. I've also gone for two big units of six Bulgrim, and these are the only infantry in the army. I told you it's going to be a different kind of list, guys. Also got two units of armored sentinels, two hellhounds, and two rogal dawns. The armored sentinels are going to have las cannons. The hellhounds are going to have all the flames, and the rogal dawns are going to have the oppressor cannon, the pulverizer cannon, and then all of the melters we can get our hands on. That's the overview of the units, but now let's deep dive how we plan to use them. Broadly speaking, my game plan is to form up into two armoured fists, each one consisting of a tank commander, a Borgren squad, an armoured sentinel unit, a hellhound and a rogal dawn. The idea is to have the armor sentinels and hellhounds at the front with the Borgrins in a second line and the Rogal Dawn and the tank commander towards the rear of the formation. The armor sentinels and hellhounds would take the charge and either the armor sentinels would die and could be reinforced or they'd be able to take it and then fall back. This would give the Rogal Dawn and the tank commander a chance to soften up the enemy before we send in the Borgrin to try and finish them in melee. This formation wouldn't be set in stone though. If we ended up facing against the opponent that had a lot of high AP weaponry and a lot of high damage, then of course the Borgrin could go into the front line instead, relying upon their 4 plus invulnerable save brute shields and their minus 1 damage and their 6 foot feel no pain to absorb the charge and then whatever survived from the Borgrins could fall back and we could deliver a big punch from all of the vehicles in the Armoured Fist. Of course, both of those scenarios are predicated on the belief I'd be facing a fast-moving assault army. There's a chance I'd be facing a very shooting army. In that situation, I would once again likely lead with the Bulgrins and have the Rogal Dawn behind. This is because the Bulgrins can push forward and distraction can effects and draw fire down upon themselves. If I'm playing against Tau, the last thing those guys want is my Bulgrin to start swinging into them. And if they go after the Rogal Dawn, well, it's got the ablative plating, it's naturally tough as 12, it's got a lot of wounds. There's a good chance that between the Bulgrins and the Dawn, I can tank the damage and then my armored sentinels my hellhounds and my tank commanders can start doing the damage whilst those other units are drawing the fire one of the big things with this list is its attitude you want to use it kind of pugnaciously you want to use it kind of ballsy to try and bully the enemy you don't really want to be holding back the point is it's tough it's durable it should be advancing forward and taking punches to the face that's why we've equipped a lot of our tanks with multi-melters and melter guns because we're expecting to be getting into the thick of it. Normally with a Rogal Dawn when I'm running in a high regard army, it's kind of expected to hang out near the back just lobbing shells forward. That's why I'll give it like the stubbers and the heavy bolters. But this time we're getting up close and personal. The Borgrins and the Armour Sentinels and the Hellhound, they're all there to make a brick wall. And they are there to give the Rogal Dawn chance to just start blasting. 
And it's going to be this very common situation where you find a Rogal Dawn is right in the thick of it. It could be six inches away from the enemy. But the way you make it work, the, the game plan, the really key to, thing to all of this is to have the Dawn close but to try and avoid it getting engaged. That's why we're looking at these durable wound dense units. Ones that will take the punch but survive so that the enemy can't start consolidating and overrunning into the big tanks behind. One unit that we have not talked about much is Gaunt's Ghosts. These have a number of roles to play in our army. Firstly, they can sit on the home objective if need be and hold that getting us some primary points. If the mission we are playing doesn't really involve holding the home objective, doesn't really get you anything, then of course they can do their uppy downy, jump up and come back down, getting us some secondary points. And if the enemy has got good screening and coming back down isn't really going to get us anything, then they have two orders which could be used to support the armoured sentinels. However, this list is not without its flaws. Firstly, it does feel very wrong that there are no tech piece engines in here. There are a couple of areas that I could cut points, maybe squeeze one or two in. I could drop one of the six-man Borgen squads down to a three-man squad. That would save me 90 points, and that would be more than enough to get a couple of tech piece engines I also could drop one of the Armoured Sentinels and that would get me enough points for a Tech Priest Engine Seer as well. But I kind of like the idea of having those big chunky Balgrin squads. Another area of inefficiency is the Tank Commanders. I'm running both of them as one order units and really I could save like 190 points if I just took one Tank Commander with Grand Strategist. The reason I haven't done this is I feel like having two tank commanders with two orders gives me the ability to spread out a little bit more. Whereas if I have one tank commander, then suddenly everything is going to be focused around that unit. And if he dies, then I'm going to be completely without order support except for Gaunt's Ghosts. If we wanted a little bit more order support and maintain the number of tanks, there is a possible solution to that. And I'd love to get your guys' take on this. Drop both tank commanders and Gaunt's Ghost. Combine that with the 30 points we have left over and we could get ourselves the Lord Solar Command Blob and also have two Lehman Russ Vanquishers. That would give us three tank orders or our four tanks, the two Vanquishers and the two Rogal Dawns and we'd still have a infantry order left over for the Armour Sentinels. That would definitely give us a lot more order support and those orders would potentially be a little bit better protected without compromising our defensive posture. Of course, the only problem then is we don't have a great unit for doing secondaries. The point I'm trying to make here is there are probably lots of ways that we could tweak and improve this list, but the fundamental concept is there and it has a lot of merit. You can get a lot of durability into this army and you can back it up with lots of different support. It's just going to come down to where you might need to trim a little bit away if you want to have your cake and eat it. If you want to have secondary objective holders, you might need to go down to three-man squads. If you want to have tech priests, you might need to go down three-man squads of Bulgrins. Interestingly, one area that I'm not concerned about with this is objective control because we are going to have Bolgrin, Armour Sentinels, Hellhounds, Rogal Dawns. All of those units actually are surprisingly OC dense. Rogal Dawns are like five OC, Hellhounds are like three, Armour Sentinels are like six minimum. You can get them up to nine. So objective control won't be a problem apart from we're facing proper dense horde armies, which are a rarity these days in the competitive meta. But let's bring all of this together. Overall, I think that it is possible for Guard to make some incredibly durable tanky lists that are going to feel like an absolute grind for your opponents to get through and are going to not only be able to take ground, but hold it. The big question I have for you guys is how would you make a hyper durable Guard 
army. I've had a first pass at this, but as you can see in this video, I'm already thinking of ways that I can tweak and improve it. And I would love your feedback on this. I'm very curious about running this at a tournament. And I'm sure between my own ideas and what you guys come up with, we should be able to develop something that is real tasty. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Lord Pryor, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.